everyone it is andrew pier here of beta at production and publishing bringing you guys a new youtube video in this youtube video we are going to be learning how to tune and mix an 808 now first we're in fl studio we will be using the drums and 808s from the beta at uh speaker beater 808 pack which is pretty much just a pack of all our all of our 808s if you guys purchase or download uh, the other drum kits, you guys might have some of the 808s, but the Speaker Beater 808 pack has all 808s. And I'm like 99% of them are like tuned, all ready to see. Now I'm going to cover how to detect the pitch of your 808 and how to tune it, as well as covering the basic fundamentals of mixing an 808. So we're going to first go ahead and create a little rap beat or a beat in general. I don't know what beat. Uh, I'm gonna get a let me look for an 808 first. I like that 808. So I'm gonna normalize that. Now to detect the pitch, what you're gonna want to do is click edit, right click the waveform, edit regions, detect pitch regions. Now that's telling me it's already tuned to C which is great but right here is going to tell you normally what it's tuned at so it's tuned at C so it's already at C if we went over to the miscellaneous functions now if it was telling me it was tuned at D then well this is a excuse me this is a D note so you're going to right click right up here and then that's going to shift everything to D so that's kind of like how it does it or like the root note now since our root note is like C C3 I'm just gonna keep it on C5 so that's pretty much how you tune your 808 really quick um, sometimes the detect pitch region or uh, detect pitch function isn't always accurate however I found it to be accurate like easily 90% of the time um, so now I'm going to grab a loop, we're going to go ahead and create a quick little beat. No. No. Alright, cool. And this is, uh, these are some loops uh, that are in our upcoming loop kit, which will be available at beatat.com. We're still working on it. But this is kind of like just a quick, uh, we got like half of them done currently. So, 135 BPM, because that's the BPM of this loop. Alright, uh, let's just do a kick. So I'm just gonna create a little basic drum loop real quick. So we got something to work with.
almost done doing this little beat. So we're getting a quick idea. So now we got our drums uh, layered with this little loop. So I'm just gonna name this drums. Eight oh eight. So now we're gonna get our eight oh eights. So we're gonna go ahead and track this eight oh eight. Now what I like to do is do a cut by self, and it's gonna automatically adjust whenever we. Um, add in our 808s but what this is going to do is whenever we hit that and click the next one it's going to stop instead of like if we didn't do that then the 808 is going to keep on going the sample is going to keep on playing and when we hit another 808 since they're both such low frequencies and such they're going to kind of collide it's going to sound wobbly and sound like a mess um, another thing we can do is pull down this attack and you see we like we hit and let go and then it like stops but if we hold down it kind of plays through the whole sample I don't like to do I don't really like that version a whole lot I prefer this one so alright now I got this loop I'm gonna do something kind of like a tactic I like to do we're gonna do edit, region, detect pitch, D, all right, yeah, that's kinda like what I was thinking. So that's gonna give me like kind of a rough estimate of like the notes, the different notes that are playing. So I saw a lot of D sharp, so maybe we're gonna play there. Maybe that's our root note. Let's start on a higher octave so we can hear the um, 808 tone. Now we're gonna knock it all down one octave. Now let's see, hear it. Get rid of that one. Alright, so that's kind of like a good, quick little 808 pattern. So what I'm going to start doing is now pull out the high end. I just don't want 
much of the high end frequencies. Now the 808, you can see there's really almost no frequencies even playing. So I can probably roll it off right there. Sometimes you might want to keep these uh, frequencies. Um, if I was putting a distortion, I'll do the distortion after the parametric EQ usually um, because the distortion is going to actually add to um, pretty much the upper harmonic frequencies because it's distorting the audio, making it more audible. And low end frequencies are usually not as audible. I mean, it's kind of like, I mean, I don't know. Distortion is pretty much adding tone, kind of, as well as distorting the audio, obviously. So if we're listening, no, that's not what I was wanting to do. I'm going to pull down a little bit on that one. I don't want like the super, super low. And then that kick, I believe. Yeah, our kick is pumping in like around 150. That thud. I'm using headphones currently. If I was using my monitors, I'd probably be getting more accurate reading um, with these audio levels and EQing. However, this is kind of like a good quick run through how to do it so got doing a little bit of boost there um since we're cutting so much of the high end we don't have to boost the low um in essence you're kind of creating more room for the low to play through by cutting out more high <clears throat> all right so that sounds pretty good what we can do is add a distortion now this is going to be optional i'm probably going to turn it off though Tune that out. <laughs> Excuse me. I mean, we can do that, but I don't want it. So we're going to disable that. Um, so now what we could do is do a maximus. I'm not going fiddle to with, fiddle with it too much. We're going to turn off the high end. Go to that band. So now we just got to work with the mid and low. Maybe if we pull in with that low into, what this is gonna do is stereo separation. So if I push this in, it's gonna do more mono. If I push this out, it's gonna uh, separate it more stereo. Um, if I was distorting this 808 and wanted it to seem bigger, excuse me, I might be, uh, I might separate it but I'm actually gonna merge it so it's more of like a baseline and comes in sort of like in the center with that mix. Now, and do a little bit of separation in that mid. can do is do a little bit compression on this 808 we're gonna pull down that threshold a little bit boost that gain so it's gonna push the volume in pull that ratio so it's gonna be like pull down that attack attack is um, when will the compression hit and pull back like affect the signal so if we pull the pull it down it's gonna be Currently it's at 7.7 .7 microseconds. Um, and we can pretty much adjust that faster. Pulling it down would mean it's gonna go faster. And then pulling it up means it's gonna take longer.
Now we can do like a little simple master. I like to have my kicks a little bit above the 808s. I like to use the Sankudizer um, sometimes on the master just because it can add a little bit of oomph but obviously you can see I have it tuned down a whole lot so it's barely even noticeable. I'm just doing some mastering, I got other videos on a channel that covers mastering but this is just some basics so let's see what this sounds like So maybe if we just do some filter work so we could hear the 808. Very basic, very quick little run through. So let's listen to this. And this is just one way you could do your 808s many different ways. So that's kind of like a quick little run through on how to do uh, some 808 work and getting a decently well mixed 808. So if you guys benefited from this tutorial video, please give it a thumbs up, like, comment, share. Let me know what you guys think. I'll see you guys later.